Welcome again to the Witcher Math channel. Today we're talking rigid transformations. A transformation is when you make a congruent copy of a two-dimensional image like this. There's the original and there's the copy. Okay? When you do that, it's called a transformation. Go ahead, say it. Right. Transformation. Usually called a pre-image and an image, but you might also see original copy, before, after, etc. Okay? So, congruent, as you remember from previous years, Congruent just means same size, same shape. So you could see that rigid, there are other types of transformations, but we're talking rigid transformations, ones that use congruent shapes. Okay, let's uh, check out what we have here. There are three kinds of rigid transformations. Whew, sorry, I need to quiet down a little bit. Three kinds. Of rigid transformations. Okay, the first one we're going to talk about today is called a translation. Okay, translation. Say it. Translation. Okay, they're either going to move left or right, like this, which means plus or minus x. We like to talk about all of these. Uh, transformations in terms of a coordinate plane sometimes most of the time I don't know and up and down just like the y-axis right that means plus or minus movement of the y coordinate and we're just relating that to the x and the y axis you can also have movement over a line okay so let me show you what I mean here here we've got a translation happening. You can see I've taken the pre-image, and here's the image. So in this case, if we take a point to compare to here, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. That is an x plus six translation. Okay. If I look at this one, it's going down, right? So it's going to be a minus y. Let's see how much. We'll take the same point of reference. One, two, three, four. So this is a, a y minus four. Okay. It's important to find that point of reference because I could move this and then just count one, two, which is a common mistake people make. But always make your count in reference to the same point. Okay. Makes it easier. And finally, there's a third kind. If we just go this way, and this is called over a line, that's simply a two-for-one deal. You can imagine to get here, I had to go plus x and minus y to get here, right? So it's it's just putting both steps in the same step. So if I want to compare this, I could go one, two, three, four, five, and then down, one, two, three, four. So that would be a plus five down four. Okay, so that's kind of doing it uh, in the two for one deal. These are all called translations. It didn't spin, it didn't grow or shrink. You know, it's just the same thing in a different spot. Okay? Next, we've got rotations. Okay, this is when we uh, spin or turn. Okay? So, rotation. We use a fixed center of rotation, which may or may not be a point on the image, here's what I mean. If I have this pack of sugar and I take my center of rotation and spin it, 
right? It's a point on the image. It's the corner, and I'm rotating around that center of rotation. But look at this high-tech device here. Pretend the paper clip's invisible, <laughs> okay? But I still have a center of rotation. Look at this. See, if my eraser is a rectangle, see how it's moving, but my center of rotation is still over here? Okay, that's an example of, I've got a center of rotation, and there's a rotation happening, but my center of rotation is not a piece of my shape that's being rotated. Whew, that's complicated. But that's two examples of how that can work. And, of course, we can either go clockwise, like a clock, right? There's 12 o'clock, there's 6 o'clock. Clockwise is that way. Or counterclockwise is going the other way, going from 6 o'clock to 12 o'clock, okay, to the left. So that takes care of our uh, rotations. Here's an example. Okay, I've got the pre-image, or my before, and i got my after image. Here is my uh, point of rotation, right, my center of rotation. Whoa, a ballpoint pen, where'd that come from? A center of rotation. Okay, so that's the point around which I rotate it. I went counterclockwise and I want 90 degrees okay these are you can use any degrees um, typically in problems out of textbooks or on paper you're going to see 90 180 either left or right okay Okay, so we've got our rotations or our spins. Notice once again, the shape stayed the same. It's still congruent, but it just spun around a center of rotation. Finally, here comes our third one. Reflections. Reflections. Not only is this a time when we, uh, you know, take a look at ourselves and our actions and decide how we could become better people, but also... It's a time when we take a pre-image and make a new image by mirroring or folding it across a line of reflection, sometimes also called a line of symmetry. I'm loving my highlighting pen now, if you didn't notice. I'm loving it. Okay. We can either have horizontal or vertical. Now, this can be kind of tricky. Let's go to our example here. Okay. A horizontal reflection means that the image actually moves side to side, okay? The image moves side to side. So because of that, as you can see here, this image got reflected or folded over, right? And stamped onto this other side. So the line of symmetry, the line of reflection is actually vertical, okay? So it's like the opposite world. This can be very confusing sometimes, okay? Also, we can have vertical mirroring, like here. This is vertical, meaning it goes up or down. The image goes up or down. So the line of reflection, for that to happen, needs to uh, be horizontal. Yeah, so we got to work that out. That can be confusing sometimes. Just remember that when we're talking reflection, we're referring to the image, not the line of reflection. We're referring to what's happening to the image. Okay, and uh, let me see if this works. I like to think of reflection or mirroring as, as folding. All right, if I take this and fold it. Hold on, Katie Lane, I'm just finishing up a video. Just walk in quietly, it's okay. If I fold this, over here and push really really hard let's see what I get 
Oh, look at that. So it's kind of what I was talking about there for reflection or mirroring. Students are coming in, so uh, i got to tune out now for the Witcher Math Channel. We've got to sign off. Okay, so back to our topic. What were we talking about? Rigid transformations, congruent shapes, pre-images and images. There's three types. We've got our translations. Oh, kids are coming in. Watch out. Translations, rotations, reflections. Thanks for watching the Witcher Math Channel. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.